Hi, I'm Travis and I'm an engineer on the academic team here at National Instruments. And today, I want to show you a new approach to teaching the theory of buck converters, a basic yet essential circuit in any power electronics class. As you know, for students to understand advanced power electronics concepts and topologies, they first need to build a strong understanding of the basics. For instance, with a three-phase inverter, students first need to understand the basic switch mode power supplies. They'd start with concepts like how a gate driver works, how to select the correct switching device, either a MOSFET or a IGBT, or how to calculate important parameters like efficiency or power losses and pulse width modulation parameters. Then they can build in-depth knowledge of how this three-phase inverter turns a DC value into an AC value. So I'm going to show you how circuit simulation followed by a hands-on application can help solidify these concepts for students. So let's get started. Here I'm showing a buck converter circuit that students typically learn about in the classroom. As you can see, they can build it in their SPICE circuit simulation software. In this case, I'm using Multisim. I've selected the 2N7269 power MOSFET as my switching device. Now in the component library, it could be replaced by hundreds of other switches depending on the power supply requirements. Now I have a freewheeling diode, and a generic open loop PWM generator, where I can set the carrier frequency and the modulation index. I see that the input voltage is 12 volts, and the PWM duty cycle is set to 70% based off of this source here. I can also see that I have an RLC filter with arbitrary values. Now by running the transient analysis, And zooming in here on the graph, I can see that my signal is hovering around 8.8 .8 volts, which is approximately 70% of 12 volts. And I can also understand two very important concepts. One, how the value of the duty cycle controls the level of the output voltage. Here we have 12 times 0.7. And two, how the values of the RLC circuit determine the transient response before settling on steady state. To further understand how this circuit operates and to evaluate all possible corner cases, I can also run a few more parameter sweeps. Let's go and come out of here. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and run a parameter sweep on my capacitor vo value. And we can see that it's in fact changing the transient response but it's still settling to the same value as before. Go ahead and close that. By this time, students have a theoretical understanding as well as personal experience to draw from in their next project application. The same approach could be used to simulate and prototype many other power electronics experiments, such as a boost or flyback converter. Now that I understand how the filter parameters optimize the circuit response for a given PWM frequency and modulation index, I can transfer now to an actual hardware design. I have here the power MOSFET and diode connected to an RLC circuit that's making my buck converter. The PWM command signals are being generated by my measurement device. In this case, I'm using a MIDAC. Here you'll see that I can generate multiple PWM signals with different duty cycles and observe the output level change accordingly. Now let's jump into a program that I can use to generate my command signals. In this case, I'm going to use LabVIEW. Let's go ahead and run this. And now you're seeing that with a duty cycle of about 90%, I'm getting about 7 volts. And I can change that duty cycle percentage, and you'll see the voltage change, which is actually updating in hardware. So by now, Students have a theoretical understanding as well as a personal experience to draw from in their next project or application. Seamlessly connecting theory, simulation, and real-world measurements improves students' comprehension of power circuits and allows them to move quickly to building more advanced projects. To further explore this approach, download the free courseware linked on this page.